Today I'm sharing with you my updated sewing room. This is not the typical sewing room. A lot different because there's also a type of filming studio in the same place because there's basically nothing that I sew that I'm not filming for you. So if you want to be a little bit nosy and see how this works, Stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and I'm in a little corner of my sewing room. This little corner has been set up as an emergency filming corner, like a little filming studio, although this is exactly where I sew as well. This setup is not typical. I just can't film in my actual filming studio right now. There's something going on there. In the last few days, I had a really, really deep clean of my sewing room. I changed my furniture around and just made everything much more functional. I'm really happy with how everything looks. And last time I showed you my sewing room was when I set this up in 2018, when I got to this house. It was actually in another bedroom. I swapped with my son. So now I'm in a different room. Very similar though. I'll just get my camera, put the microphone to the back so you can hear my voice and I'll show you how everything works in here. Maybe it'll give you a fun insight of what goes on here when you watch my sewing videos. Hi sewing friends, welcome to my sewing room. I'm gonna show you around. This is where the magic happens, the sewing magic. So come on in. This is how my room looks when you go inside. Of course, I have some lights here just to make it look pretty, but those aren't usually there. <laughs> I'm just trying to make it look as best as I can. Over here on this side, we have all the fabric. I'll show you that in a second. All tucked away, away from my eyes. This fan is a great find. The fan is great because it cools me down and it's really silent. You'll never pick it up on camera, so. That was awesome. On that corner is where I sew. There is the ironing board, TV, and my desk where I cut fabric and edit. As you know, I make videos here, so that's where I charge all the things I need, lights, batteries for my camera. It's always a big mess, but at least I know I'm not supposed to step there. <laughs> That has to be there. I'm filming with the tripod on this chair so that it's nice and smooth and you don't get shaky scenes. This is where I look at myself when I'm sewing, if things are fitting, my muslins. You always need a mirror in your sewing room or else it's just not practical. When we got here, I bought this table secondhand from a house around the neighborhood. So heavy, it's so heavy, like that is metal. It just weighs so much, I don't know how we're gonna get it out of the house someday. But it's really firm, that's why I'm really happy to cut fabric and it's a really sturdy table and it doubles up as my desk for editing you know the notebook is easy to remove if I need the whole you know surface to put fabric this panel that you see here is not what you would typically see in a sewing room it's an acoustic panel it's supposed to block the echo sometimes I sit here and do some voiceovers when I'm editing so that has helped a lot with the sound quality I'm super simple in my planning and I just have a tiny bulletin board everything written by hand i cannot work with digital planners i have to see it and write it and i'm very old school i always have a really simple notebook here where i write my notes for any pattern i'm sewing super old school all handwritten and i do this page for any project i'm gonna sew you know I, I just write notes about the pattern the fabrics the sizing my fitting adjustments and that is sort of what I keep in my mind for when I do the videos for you there is my other camera with my microphone always lots of ugly cables everywhere you know fabulous light has to be there because when I'm cutting fabric and showing you the layout and some of the sewing steps this needs to be well lit here so in the past I didn't have it and you could really tell the footage wasn't that clear. I have a TV for my entertainment, you know, it's really basic used TV or so secondhand. And this set of drawers was actually on this desk. Originally that was on the side there, but one day it just fell off. It was so heavy, it just fell on the floor. So we just took it out properly and just put it on that little table. Right there on the side I glued some hooks, you know those ones that you just stick on. And I have all my rulers right there for when I'm doing pattern adjustments or drawing patterns. In the second drawer, I have all the buttons. I have them all organized and classified by styles. I have them in little baggies. So it's really easy for me to come and hunt for buttons when I need. I usually have what I need, but sometimes there are projects where I just don't have the right color or the right type or the right amount of buttons. But there is quite a lot for me to have a look in there. In this one, I have a mix of electronics and just scissors that I use for taping PDFs, sticky tape, 
lots of pens for me to draw on patterns and make fitting adjustments, tons of cables. And in that corner here, I have my tracing paper that I use when I'm marking on patterns. Everything is really functional. I've just made this be in a way that I can just grab everything really fast when I'm working. I got these curtains just recently. They are blackout curtains. I had a problem in the morning. The sun hits this window. I couldn't film, everything was white and just I couldn't see. <laughs> So in the morning, I usually close those curtains so that the sun doesn't hit me so hard. And look, they need to be hemmed so bad, but hemming curtains is super boring. In this little table is where I get all the sewing done. Just two machines, really basic. I have my serger and my sewing machine right there. And I always wanna keep this table as empty as possible. There's nothing there for decoration, it's all for function. I just recently showed you a Vogue patterns haul, so that's why those patterns are there, but they shouldn't. I always want everything empty. Also, because when I film, I don't want you to see clutter. Here's a battery for my camera. You see when I saw tutorials that I film a lot on this pink cutting mat, what I do is move this sewing machine out of the way all the time. I just push it to the back. So that's what I do when I'm sewing and then I film steps right there. Then I bring the machine back and sew. So I'm fiddling with the machine the whole time. I always keep this dish with my pins really handy. I have these little tins super handy on one of the lids. I have my most commonly used presser feet. The zipper one I'm gonna put away because I don't use that much. I don't use it that much but my quarter inch presser foot that I use all the time and my blind hand presser foot that I use all the time. These are always here and I just quickly swap. It's really fast. I don't wanna be opening this. And if I go in there, you'll find all the other presser feet that I have, you know, buttonholes, whatever. The ones that are in here are the ones that I use least. And on here, I just keep the needles I'm using the most in this little tin. <laughs> I keep the needles that I wanna use a little bit longer. Like maybe I've just sewn one project with a specific needle and I know I wanna use it again. And that's how I make sure my needles are in good condition. And then when I've used it for maybe two projects, I get rid of them and get new needles. I always want nice sharp needles, you know? And in here, I don't have anything sewing related. This is all about filming. Lots of SD cards and adapters and whatnot. It's just stuff for the camera. I always have it there because I always need them. They need to be handy. As handy as these things are, these things need to be handy as well. I have a basic electronic Janome 2030 QDC. It's almost five years old. I'm not sponsored by Janome's. I don't really mention them at all that much, but it's a good machine. It does what I need. I don't really need anything more than that right now. And when I sew, I don't want anything here. I'm getting ready to sew a project and I do this with most. I do a tiny little list of my sewing steps or the way I want to sew them because I've already been through the pattern instructions. This most probably won't be in the same order as you'll see in instructions. It's in the way that I'm gonna sew it and I just have this handy. I also always have one of these handy to snip thread because I snip as I go, I don't leave the threads for later. And seam rippers, you always need those handy, a few hand sewing needles, a little container full of bobbins that always has to be handy. And then I have this little tin from a cake uh, with some thread. Not all of them, but the ones I mostly use. And that's it, I don't want anything else on this table. But here you see that I have other things. I have a studio light right there that is going to ensure that all the sewing that I do has good lighting and that you can see really nicely no matter what time of the day. If you can see at the back, I have this type of tripod with a microphone there that I attach onto a camera, sometimes I need that. And this tripod that you see there, that is the one that I use to film sewing steps. On top there is where I would put the camera. So I use a smaller camera for this, but pretend that that is where the camera would be. And for each scene that I'm sewing, each take, I adjust that tripod. I, I get it in another angle, closer, further away. So that is irreplaceable, that tripod right there. Without that, I couldn't really get the good up close shots. It's also important to me that this tripod is separated from the table so it doesn't pick up the small vibrations that the machines do. If I were to clamp something right there to film, you would have terrible vibration and that's not cool. So I take this tripod and bring it over here where the table is when I need to film sewing steps, layouts. You know, I go from here to there and having the table set up this way is just much more functional than how I used to have it before. In this corner, I also have acoustic panels. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there. 
These are on the walls to absorb echo so that the sound quality is better when I'm filming tutorials. I think it's made a huge difference. You know I sew right there, right? So I have access to these drawers right here. So, so handy. I'll show you what's in there. But I also have a really special box on the top. This has nothing to do with sewing, but just as important, full of camera stuff. Here I have microphones, tripods, a bunch of different microphones actually batteries for the camera I have to be swapping these really really frequently I always need to have them charged all the time I think I have five of these so I never run out of battery so this is super important I really really need this to be up here really handy not sewing related but related to the channel and in this first drawer first thing I find when I open this drawer is what I need when I'm sewing sometimes I need a tape measure so this box is full of tape measures is a little box full of needles there's like a billion needles in here it's a really good organized for needles a subscriber sent this to me and it's so good like I have so many needles there I don't need these as handy as I need the tape measure so that's why they're at the back and then I have a whole bunch of scissors and my rotary cutters so that's what I need like first priority and then I have other things here extra needles bias tape makers a lot of clear elastic tray check you know, these pliers I use pretty frequently when I tr want to trim zippers and take off zipper teeth. So, um, also here at the back, I have a lot of rotary cutter blades. At the bottom there, I just have tools like screwdrivers and things. And on the bottom, I have more camera supplies that I use less, but they're still in there. There's a load of more camera stuff at the bottom. When I sew, I take all the threads from my table and throw them there all the time so I don't make a mess. I just have that light for decoration right there, but it's not supposed to be there. <laughs> really handy is just a simple ironing board. I keep putting these on top of each other because they keep getting stained and I don't film myself at the iron much because I have burnt myself in the past. The tripods get in the way. Down there, I have a lot of threads in those little white boxes. Super neat. I know exactly what box to go to. Here I have all the red, purple and orange tones. I'll find these really easily in this box. In this other one, I have the blues and the greens. And the one at the back is just the blacks and the whites. Here's my little tailor's iron that's good for pants and sleeves. It's really really old it was gifted to me from my mother-in-law in that purple box i have lots of elastic different types widths so that's boring i'm not going to show you that <laughs> and then all my notebooks that i use for writing notes on patterns i've got several years worth there and some sewing books at the bottom i've tried to get better at not having too many patterns in the room because it used to get really messy especially in this area i would start stacking them up so I only have two PDF patterns that I'm working on right now. As soon as I'm done with them, I'll put them in the box where they have to be. But I'm trying not to get this cluttered because it can easily get really cluttered there. This wardrobe goes all the way up to the roof, all the way down, and it's full of fabric. Just the way I like it, protected from the sun and the elements and from my view. If I had the fabrics on view, it would really stress me out. So let me show you what I can. These are the cupboards that are right on the top. I have to get on a stool to be able to access these. Up there, I have cottons. All those up, up there are cottons and like shirting, chambrays, that type of thing. In that little box, I have crepe fabrics that are in solids. So if I want a solid crepe, I'll get that box. <laughs> These are all broderie and glaze fabrics, all cottons, eyelet fabrics, they are all in that box. Lots of lovely colors. That's the last one I got, that's why it's not too neat. <laughs> and this is where I have all the denims and cotton twills. Bottom weight fabric, I have the stretch denims right there, I have non-stretch denims there. All for like making jeans or skirts, that's all right there, very neat. I recently purchased a roll of paper. It's so much paper, I'm so happy because I would never run out of paper for making patterns. My mom painted me this years ago, last time she came, and I love it. I always have it here. It really inspires me, so that is the only decoration I have in the room. This is the other cupboard that's close to the roof. Up here, I have all the wool tweeds, so look at this. I have a few of them, not many, but it's just that little corner. Some sweatshirting, some heavy jacquards type things, Ponte Roma right there. In that black box, I have the type I use to make yoga waistbands with. Also ribbing, if I need some ribbing, it's in there as well. You know that denim look cotton jersey? I have a ton of it here, I bought so much. I have some rib knits, sweater knits. I have some rayon French terry knits right there, embroidered ones, you know, those ones that look like cotton eyelet, but they're knits. 
they're all there so just a variety of knits right there the heavier type nice and neat I put them in there in a way that I could see them all so when I look I can see all the ones that I have in there same as on the top so I don't have like two rows <laughs> I have them all on view in this little shelf I have suiting materials here all woven and here I have cotton sateens in this little area I've also got them in a way there that I can see them all. Inside here, I hang projects that I'm working on, some muslins I'm working on, and finished projects before I film videos, I keep them there. And stacked right there, this half this way, is athletic knits, all of that is athletic knits. That box has just the navy and the black athletic knits, I have a lot of yardage of that. And then at the bottom I have all the prints and all of this section is just really lightweight rayon prints, all of them. I've also got them in a way that I can see them all, so I just have to go like this and find what I need. I have some drawers of fabric and this is where I have the really lightweight fabrics. These are all really slinky, really lightweight silk type polyester fabrics. Really, really fine, like really, really thin. I can fit a whole ton in this drawer and that's why I have them there. All prints. Nothing in here is a solid. Down here I have a little bit of crepe fabrics, heavier fabrics. So not so light as the first drawer. This is another drawer full of crepe fabrics. You can see they're packed. <laughs> I really can't stack up these fabrics because they just slide and fall everywhere. And in this drawer at the bottom I have chiffon. Like everything in there is really lightweight and transparent. Here on this top shelf I have on this side rayon twills solids and prints and on this side i have that rayon linen blend that i love to sew in all types of solid colors it's that really textured heavier type of rayon with 13 or 14 percent linen so that is all what that is down here on this shelf i have the same type of fabric rayon with a tiny bit of linen but it's all prints lovely i love them i can see them i love sewing with those over here on this side i have some sweater knits all of those love them i can see them all i have some prints and some solids that box in the middle has really lightweight athletic knits that i can use for making tank tops i have quite a few colors so that is what that is in that little area i have lace and in that bag i have stretch mesh in that section i have just lining fabrics in that bag I have power net. In a huge bag I bought like eight yards recently. And those two little bags at the bottom are just remnants, little pieces of fabric that I find valuable. Then I have just boxes stacked up. The box on the bottom has rayon spandex and the box on the top has IT wipe. As you can see, my stash of knits is quite smaller than my collection of woven fabrics. <laughs> here I also have two little drawers and this first one is just silk. Everything in here is 100% silk, prints and solids. So I have quite a nice little collection of 100% silk. <laughs> I should sew it more, you know? Some of them are washed, others are not washed yet, you know? So next time you wonder how my situation is or how my setup is, now you've seen it, you've seen the ins and out of my room. This is where I spend all my hours basically. You've finally seen what's in there. I did tidy it up for you because it had really gotten out of hand. The ones that I didn't show you were my linen collection. Those don't fit in this wardrobe. So I've got them in my son's room. We can't go there obviously. Over there we have the same situation with the cupboards on the top. So all the top part is taken over by my fabric. It doesn't need the space. On one side are the printed linens, on the other the solids, and I know where to get them. I don't use them that frequently, so it's not a hassle to get a stool and go there. I have that little stool here all the time. I'm always getting up on that stool to get stuff. Yeah, it, I'm just hoping I never fall off, you know? When I just got here and when I started my channel, I had zero filming equipment. Like my videos were, you know, not that great. <laughs> But over time I've invested in, you know, the acoustic panels, the blockout curtains that also help with sound. You know, before I just had ceramic floors like what you can see there and I could have my feet on the cold floors, which was really nice. It's got carpet everywhere, which helps with sound. It, this room was super echoey. Those acoustic panels here mean I can just film nicely now and not have that echo, I can do nice voice voiceovers as well. So after playing around, I'm finally at a place where I'm so, so happy with this that I just made it look as best as it can to share it with you. I will never have the perfect room, perfectly decorated, like what a beautiful room, you know? 
but it's functional and it does what I need and it's just perfect right now. I just don't need anything else. I love my empty walls and my empty table. It's just what I need. So I hope this was fun to watch. As you can see, there are a lot of stuff in here that is not in the typical sewing room. I have a lot of lights, equipment, camera, tripods everywhere. There's just a lot of that stuff in there. And I also need to have those as handy as I have my sewing supplies. So, you know, if I wanna reach for a seam rip, it has to be right there. Same as my extra batteries and all the things that I use when I'm filming videos. So I hope this was interesting to see. Just a little insight into this world of being a sewing YouTuber because that's what I do. I make videos on YouTube and I hope you enjoyed this. That's all from me today and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.